You know, if you think about how the believer carries themselves in this life, the believer is not someone who seeks to be on a throne or someone who seeks a position of highness. And the believer is not someone who's relaxed in the sense that they have a great sense of urgency. So they're not laying back when other people lay back and are heedless. They're fighting with themselves so that they can pray, so that they can strive for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And while others will do anything that they possibly can to have power and to have prestige, the believer seeks to be humble and instead seeks that prestige and that place of prominence with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in a high place in paradise instead of this lowly world. The furniture of Jannah reflects many of the themes that are found in the qualities of the believer and how the opposite is now true in terms of your positions in the hereafter. And so if you think about couches, you know, when people talk about couches in this life, usually it's speaking about relaxing after a long day of work. And so you have couches in Jannah and it shows up in the Quran along the same theme, people reclining and relaxing with one another after a long life of hard work and the entirety of this life will seem like a day or part of a day once we enter into that eternal bliss, inshallah ta'ala. And then you have thrones and thrones denote honor, right? And many of the thrones in this life, if not all of them, are usually sought by means of corruption and then used as means of tyranny. And the believer is not involved in either one of those two things. And so on the day of judgment, they sit on thrones in the gardens of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as they avoided all of those things that would have corrupted their good deeds and lowered their position with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So let's look through some of the categories of the furniture in Jannah. So you have the furniture of the homes and these palaces of paradise have been furnished in the most beautiful of ways. They have gardens that you can sit and recline in. You have beautiful couches of delightful colors. You have high beds and the interiors are lined with silk. You have this magnificent appearance of the drapes and the various colors. You have cushions and carpets that are laid out that match the colors of the gardens. You have all of these things. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions fiha sururun marfu'a wa akwabun mawdu'a wa namariqu masfufa wa zarabiyu mabthutha. Right? So you have thrones raised high and cups in your hands and cushions that are set in rows and rich carpets spread out. And he says, muttaki'ina ala rafrafin khudrin wa abqariyan hisan. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, reclining on green cushions and rich, beautiful mattresses. So you have the relaxation of Jannah, and that is a common theme. And when you read these ayat, it refers to the loss of hem, the loss of anxiety, right? You're not really worried about anything in Jannah anymore. And so the reclining position is spoken about to reflect that the soul is now at rest. Whereas in this life, you were fighting with your body because the soul was not at rest and you were seeking that comfort in Jannah and forsaking the comfort of this dunya. And then you have the gatherings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Al-Jannah. So this is one theme of gatherings. And these are the people that are sitting on platforms of light and they are the highest people. You have people that are sitting on platforms of gold. You have people that are sitting on platforms of silver. And you have the lowest person in the gathering that's sitting on a sheet of pearl. But the Prophet ﷺ said that no one's going to think that anyone is higher than them. And this is when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala addresses the people of Jannah. So the people gather and everyone sits on their allotted throne or platform or sheet or whatever it may be. And the Prophet ﷺ said that everyone is going to see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the same way that when you look at the full moon, you don't have to crowd each other. You don't have to push anyone away. Everyone sees the full moon clearly. Likewise, everyone in Jannah will look up and they will see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will address everyone directly. So this is one theme of the gatherings and the furniture of Al-Jannah that you sit on something that represents your rank with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then Ibn al-Qayyim rahimahullah, he says the description of the cushions and carpets being lined up and spread shows that they are always available for you to recline and sit on them. And they're never hidden and they're never taken away from you. They're never put away. And if you think about 
You know, if you go to a resort in this life, they always put the beach chairs away at some point, right? They always put the furniture away. But the idea of all of these couches, all of these thrones, all of these places to relax, always being out there shows you that in Jannah, you can do whatever you want, whenever you want. And so this represents this theme of relaxation. But as we said, when we relax, we're in conversation. And the best type of conversation is when we are in glory with one another. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions to us this glorious gathering when generations come together. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, ثُلَّةٌ مِنَ الْأَوَّلِينَ وَقَلِيلٌ مِنَ الْآخِرِينَ عَلَىٰ سُرُرٍ مَوْضُونَ مُتَّكِئِينَ عَلَيْهَا مُتَقَابِلِينَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, imagine this gathering. You have a multitude of those from the first generations, those who embraced Islam first. And then you have a few of those who came from the later generations. And they're all sitting on thrones that are woven with these precious stones and gold. And they're reclining on these thrones together face to face. Think about being in a gathering where you're sitting with Sahaba, where you're sitting with Tabi'een, where you're sitting with great people that have come before you. And while the majority that would be in that particular gathering would be from the earlier generations, there would be some of those that came later on, but that followed them in righteousness. And you're sitting around and you're having conversations and you're talking about what happened in your generation versus their generation. You're clarifying moments of history with them, but you're all on the same thrones facing one another as brothers, as equals who love each other for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and who are now enjoying the bliss from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala together. So that's one category. Then you have those who forgave each other. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions, وَنَزَعْنَا مَا فِي صُدُورِهِمْ مِنْ غِلٍ إِخْوَانًا عَلَى سُرُورٍ مُتَقَابِلِينَ They are the people who we said Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala removes from their chests any type of injury, any type of harm that they had towards one another. And now they are brothers facing each other on thrones. And so people that forgave each other for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And subhanAllah, forgiveness raises ranks. So you're higher in Jannah because you forgave someone. And this is something that's very special because we know that the Prophet ﷺ spoke about people that loved one another for the sake of Allah. And those that loved one another for the sake of Allah are even higher than those who forgave one another for the sake of Allah. So when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about those who forgave one another for the sake of Allah, they're on thrones that are elevated. But when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about those who love one another for the sake of Allah, they are on these pulpits of light that look like stars, even to those that are on the thrones. And I want you to think about this. Ka'b radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he said that the people that love each other for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they're so high in the ghuraf, they're so high in these rooms and these platforms of light in Jannah, just as they were on the day of judgment that people in the lower parts of Jannah, they see these shining stars and they comment, هَذَا رَجُلْ مِنَ الْمُتَحَابِينَ فِي اللَّهِ This must be one of those people who love someone else for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Think about the way that those people were on pulpits of light on the Day of Judgment and they were admired even by the prophets and the martyrs. And now they are admired by the entirety of Jannah for loving one another for the sake of Allah. And they have furniture that can't even be seen by other people in Jannah. So how many people do you love for Allah that are from the shining stars of the earlier generations? And how will you be a star for generations after you to follow in your example? Ya ayyatuhan nafsul mutma'innah irji'i إلى ربك راضية مرضية فادخلي في عبادي وادخلي جنتي